So this is what I learned so far. Laser engraving is now a affordable hobby. You can get a machine cheaply like the Atom Stack. They do a whole range of uh, different laser cutter from the entry level A5 like I have here that you can have for less than about 200 pounds. You do need to do some upgrade to make it work for you. For example, the cutting bed, you don't need to spend like 50 quid. You can just buy something £6.50 or use whatever you have at home, some magnet, and you get a very good cutting platform. I do quite a bit of cutting now because it's very addictive. And in my uh, studio here, although the window is right there, it does produce a lot of fumes, so uh, smoke. So having a box like this with an exhaust out the window, and you know, the, my little trick here is that my PVC windows have those trigger vents on top. I just buy an adapter for, I think, uh, five pounds from two station, and then um, convert that into the outlet, which works perfectly fine for this small space in here. I can still take the machine out and do other works outside, or if I have a bigger piece of wood, I can slide it in and out once I take them out. Some people like to have the lid open, where you can still slide in a long piece of wood. For me, I only do small stuff anyway, so this works for me best. And to be honest with you, I ran out of material. This is unintentional, so uh, I, only, I only deal with what I have. If you want to get into engraving, the Atom Stack A5 is the one I tested, but there's a lot of different ones available on the market. The A5 do need a computer to work, so this is my cheap laptop. Light burn is probably the only expensive stuff I need to buy. And, um, but it is a fantastic software, but it does come with a free software as well, which is more like uh, the laser GRBL, which is like a, a open source program. You can make do with that. The A5 can do engraving and cutting at the same time, as long as you use light burn, and then you can adjust like all the parameter power and stuff like that, and you can do some creative design like this. Now the laser packer is a different kind of uh, laser. So this one I think is what people call a fiber laser, but this company is fantastic. I have the laser packer one and now I have the laser packer two. Actually what it does is it bring engraving to your desktop. The Actum Stack A5 has like almost like a 400 by 400 cut space, as big as the square, uh, the two axes. But the laser packer is refined to basically this cone shape. 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. You don't have to use the cone, but the cone is a plastic protector, plus it has a fan extract the, the smoke out. This one you can mount it with the plate over there. Um, this one you can mount with the uh, stand. You have a roller stand to uh, engrave bottle, which I'm gonna do as well, but that will be in my previous video or in the next video. So this one here is a 12 volt 5A. You can actually power up with a special power bank. And you can take this portable, you can do it outside, in the shed, or in the garden, go to client's house and engrave. And they're very good at engraving, but in terms of cutting, this is not really designed for cutting. I mean, some people may say wrong, I'm wrong. You can cut small things with it, but I tell you two downsides to using this kind of a fiber uh, laser machine. One is that the laser is in the middle, it doesn't move. So when it cuts, it forms an angle to whatever you try to cut. The middle part is fine. As soon as you go out, first the laser is going to weak, weaken, and secondly, it has a bevel edge to whatever that you're going to cut. And secondly, for it to cut something like this one here, if you want that to cut this, which you can, but you have to do like eight, nine, 12 passes to cut a free meal pie. By the time it cuts through, it will leave a lot of burn marks on top. The A5 need air assist which is this tube here. So the limitation is that the laser is not very strong to begin with, and when it hits the object, it burns. When the smoke comes out it kind of, and, and the suits come out, the black stuff kind of blocks the remaining laser coming down, and that greatly reduces the power. That's why I have the aquarium pump here to blow the dust away, and the nozzle is right at the laser. Whereas this one, you can't have something like that. You can have a fan blowing generally on the whole area, but you can't concentrate the airflow to the laser pointer. That's why this is not really good for cutting. I have a feeling that I will be selling this one soon, but at the same time, this is so well built. The quality 
of this is it's like everything is machine i feel almost like sh ashamed to use something like this to clamp it onto my tripod but this is just what i uh, make do um, with this video but this is something that i think is almost like a collection item i will cherish it a lot because this thing is fantastic it's what it meant to be doing like engraving so one of them so as you can see, this is just general MDF that you know you get from hardware store, and um, the, this shading is amazing. This takes a lot of time because this is a grayscale picture, so that means the laser have to travel the whole width of the picture throughout every single pixel. But this is fantastic in terms of detail. This is a 2K resolution from the software app, and you don't need a computer, just an app on your phone or your, on your tablet. And if you check out this, this um, writing is basically what I wrote on the app and it burns and it's so sharp, so clean. Love it. A5, I am using 150 mil per minute and 100% power. And it's only one pass. I probably can get away with 100. I think it's now very well tuned um, in terms of um, the cutting capability. So I'm cutting a very thin piece of wood here. I think it's about two mil and it has no problem. And the, and the line is really, really fine now. And um, I learned from mistakes. So basically you do need airflow underneath the uh, uh, cutting material. So I have a mesh here. I got it from uh, b and I think it's just a, a 0 0.5 mil um, metal grill. The air assist, which is basically just a aquarium pump. Uh, I got the plumb line coming out there. I can show you that in a minute. And after this, I'm going to use the uh, laser packer and then do exactly the same, the same size, just for comparison. So this is a 10 uh, centimeters by 10 centimeter image. I just copied from the internet. If I show you my build here, so this is my Pandora box. Still not finished yet, but this is almost to how I want it. And this is the aquarium pump. And this is the exhaust fan which saved my studio from being full of smoke. And uh, with this lid on, I can still see what's going on and actually it keeps all the smoke inside and uh, let the exhaust fan work. Alright, so here is the autumn stack. I think it's now very well tuned um, in terms of um, the cutting capability. So I'm cutting a very thin piece of wood here. I think it's about 2 mil, and it has no problem. And, uh, and the line is really, really fine now. And um, I learned from mistakes, so basically you do need airflow underneath the uh, uh, cutting material. So I have a mesh here. I got it from uh, b and I think it's just a, a 0 0.5 mil um, metal grill. With the air assist, which is basically just an aquarium pump, uh, I got the plumb line coming out there. I can show you that in a minute. And now I have the laser packer set up. So it's chasing the image on the wood to show you what is going to be cut. Now, without air assist, I do worry about, you know, it catch fire because there's nothing blowing onto the hot laser. The, the, it, might, it might start a fire if, there, if the laser is on the point for too long. That's why I can't go with 100% because 100% means that it goes really slowly. And when it goes slow, it stays on the spot for too long, it might burn. Hopefully it's burning through, but I can't be sure. I might have to run one more pass after this. Okay, so very quickly, uh, only six minutes, it did one pass, but unfortunately, it didn't cut through. As I expected, it didn't cut through because it does need a slower movement of the laser. And um, yeah, I can tell straight away the line is not as sharp as the um, Atom stack. But the reason is because, uh, first of all, there is no air assist. I think that is very important to blow away the dust and the smoke, so give the laser a chance to penetrate. So you can see that, you know, a lot of the cutout is already dropping into the mesh, whereas this one, almost nothing has dropped. So what I'm going to do is, without touching it, I'm going to press repeat, and I'm going to use the same power, just run it one more time. What it will do is it will burn over the mark, so the line is going to be thicker. But hopefully this is enough to uh, go through. So you see, I can already see some fire starting over there. So unless I can get a air assist to it or else, it's not going to be uh, uh, a, a good cut. I think if I can blow some like compressed air on the side, that might stop the fire from coming through. Okay, so fresh piece of wood. 
and this time I'm going to set it to 70% instead of 100 and see if it has enough power to cut through but don't burn the material so uh, yep let's start I can see on the side that it did cut through so I think this is enough hopefully it won't burn at 70% depth is definitely cut through in one pass because you can see some of the little detail just falling through which is very promising so now is done as you can see there's a big difference in terms of the quality of the cut if I take off the print so the laser packer did not cut through I think um, it does need some kind of an air assistant or maybe one more pass to cut it through which I, I, I still got loads of this wood so I'm going to do one more test on the laser packer because I refuse to give in I hope that it's not because of my uh, setting that it fails to cut I need to find a way that it doesn't leave scorch mark behind as well and you can see this one is from the autumn stack a5 it doesn't doesn't get better than this so uh, i'm just going to shake it a little bit you can see all the little bits are fall behind on this tray and this do an amazing job of letting the smoke out from the bottom side of the cut if i just give it a tap and see all the loose bits just come off unless they get hooked onto the shape Okay, it does need a tiny bit of cleanup. Yeah, it does need a little bit of cleanup. I can see like one piece of uh, very detail would get stuck here. Probably we'll push it with a fine needle or screwdriver. Or we'll just keep cracking it down. But yeah, in terms of cutting, that autumn stack with the air assist is perfect. And uh, obviously, obviously you need a tray to uh, make sure there's airflow underneath. Yeah, the the cut is just amazing. I mean the wood, I mean, I mean the wood itself is not thick. You can see that is only like a two mil kind of wood, but the detail is just amazing. Okay, so most of the big pieces fall through, but the finer detail I couldn't get rid of it unless I break the wood. So not so good so even if you do multiple passes i'm not sure if it will work i mean the image wise is just one millimeter smaller but just how the system converted and besides um the autumn stack because the laser is cutting straight down so everything is kind of a square to the uh, depth of the wood but whereas the laser packer because the laser is always from the middle so the one on the side there's a slant angles to it Okay, one of the things that the laser packer can do where the atom stack cannot is portability. Now this thing here is basically a handheld device. Now I'm, gonna, I'm not going to handheld it because I'm going to engrave something like a grayscale. It's going to take a long time. So what I have here is basically a camera mount or tripod with a clamp, put it in place. Now I do have to make sure that the image is uh, upside down like that but still i'm going to test it on paper before i'm going to engrave it onto that it's not engraving onto my box yet i got a piece of uh, thin uh, wood here so i'm just testing to make sure that the logo is in the right orientation i don't want an upside down logo on my box now engraving grayscale graphic is a long process but I think the effect is worth it because it gives you a lot more detail. It's almost like painting or printing on wood. I mean, for example, like this one, all the shadings and um, effect is still there. It's a shame that, you know, it's only like a 10 centimeter square. I mean, if this machine can pull back and like, you know, engrave a larger area, which I think may be the the next level or next version this is a generation 2 I did have the generation 1 as well of the laser packer and I find that pretty amazing so here is something that the laser packer can't do so I'm on my laptop with my um, light burn software so I got a logo here and what I did was basically um, screenshot this and then put it into um, light burn use a trace function so you separate the engraving and the outline 
and basically I have um, asked the outline to be um, cut and then the rest of them engraving and they will do that in that order so if you look at the machine which is now already started so what it is now doing is, is engraving the the uh, so this is now engraving the magic circle and then when it's finished it will cut it out as well which obviously the laser packer can't do the laser packer is very good for like uh, engraving wood obviously limited by the square but they are very good at doing this kind of thing but they can't cut and engrave at the same time or at least I don't know how to do it I mean they're rated 40 watts for the whole unit but the laser itself I think it's about 5.5 volts or 5 volts so it's a lower uh, power one I am going to upgrade soon so hopefully the next video will be with a uh, one which have two laser built in that use a little mirror to combine the two here we go my nice little uh, magic circle this is like one of the Japanese cartoon m &A symbol thing so uh, yeah looks looks pretty good now the centerpiece is the magic circle I cut with the A5 and engrave the A5 all in one so engrave and cut the lettering simple cut from the A5 that was easy the logo and the picture is by the laser packer too like the amount over there uh, vertically uh, lasering here so this is with grayscale and um, some of them turn out really good like this wave um, portrait so a lot of like shading this got it right so I remember the setting was 100% power and I think it's 6% depth and then this one okay but then you can see here it loses out some of the details it's supposed to be a square so here it's just some light I think it was a blue kind of a uh, thing so the software didn't register as a shadow the logo here you might not see it here but if I come close the Apex Legend logo actually have very very fine details and this one the laser packer at 2k resolution actually capture everything perfect and this is just a kind of a uh, download logo from the internet so it's not even a like wallpaper as such those are like wallpaper but cut into square because th that's a limitation of the size of the laser packer for example this one here you can see that a lot of detail is gone uh, this is Duluk which is my main character in Ginshi uh, pyro character and you can see that you know um, very dark image a lot of uh, details over here is lost and this is the same setting as this one here so this is Shogun or well, Ginshi Impact Shogun Raiden Shogun and this one has like you know a lot of flowers and like uh, light effects and stuff like that and this one kind of show up okay but this one here a lot of detail is gone now if I am a uh, professional and I use like Photoshop and stuff like that and then edit the photos before I put into Lightburn or the Laser Impact 2 own software I will get a lot better results I hope you enjoy my video don't forget to share like and subscribe to my channel to help me grow and I can't wait to see you next time with more projects like this thank you very much and bye bye